Well, hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Dave, and in this video, I wanna compare the Zoom PodTrack P8 to the Tascam Mixcast 4. These are both mixers designed for podcasters, for streamers, and they've got a lot of use cases. I've been using the Zoom PodTrack P8 for a while now on my main channel for all of my podcasting and for my live streaming. It's been pretty good so far, but it does have a couple of issues, and that's kind of why I've got the Mixcast 4 in front of me as well, because I am a gear snob and I always tend to upgrade. Uh, so I wanted to see what this thing was all about. And in this video, I'm not going to get super technical. I'm really making this video for my own personal use, because I wanted to know if the Mixcast 4 is worth investing in compared to the PodTrack P8, because I've got the P8, um, I picked up the Mixcast 4, and this is my chance to put them side by side to see which one sounds better. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the hardware really quick. Again, this is not going to be overly technical because I'm not really an audio snob. I'm just a guy on YouTube that wants good sound quality. So quickly, let's look at the hardware. The Zoom PodTrack P8 has an interesting design. They're both a pretty similar design, but the P8 has actually six XLR inputs where the Mixcast 4 has four XLR inputs on the back here, um, but they are actually combo inputs. So you can plug in a quarter inch plug like a guitar or something like that, or an XLR microphone. Now, even though the P8 does have more XLR inputs on the top of the device here, uh, one of them is occupied for USB. So if you've got your computer plugged into this and you wanna playback audio from the computer into your podcast, or even take a remote call on FaceTime or something like that, that would occupy this channel, so you'd only have five inputs, whereas the Mixcast 4 has a dedicated Bluetooth channel. It also has a dedicated TRRS channel. So these are totally independent from the four XLR inputs. So at the end of the day, the P8 really only gets one extra XLR input. And to be honest, me personally, I'm never gonna have five or six people in a room uh, with six different microphones. That's just not gonna happen. At most, I could probably see two or three people, and that's where the Mixcast 4 seems a little bit more suitable to my use case. Another couple of differences between the PodTrack P8 and the Mixcast 4 is the overall size of the unit. The P8 is a much smaller unit. It's also very light, and that's because it's mainly made out of plastic, uh, but it does feel like it's pretty robust. The Mixcast 4 is, again, it's made out of plastic, but it's really hefty feeling, and it reminds me of Tascam's older, like, uh, tape recorders from back in the day, like multi-channel tape recorders. It's well built. It feels like it's gonna last a long time. Definitely has the edge in terms of build quality. I also think that it just looks a little bit nicer. Another thing different between these two devices is the stroke on the faders. On the PodTrack P8, you've got these kind of small faders. Um, they're pretty short, even though they are pretty smooth, they feel pretty good. But on the new Mixcast 4, you've got these nice big faders that have a ton of strokes. So you can really dial in the volume you know, when you're mixing your podcast. Now, both units do have a uh, sound pad, so you can load jingles or music onto the device and play them back in real time. The Mixcast 4 and the PA come with a bunch pre-installed, like you've got, you know, an audience clapping. Um, you can do all that fun stuff. You can also load your own on there. You can have background music that you can have looping in the background and control the volume with the dedicated slider on both of them. And both do have nice soft touch buttons. So these don't make any noise when you click them because that's important. If you're re recording a podcast, you don't want clicky buttons. And what's interesting about that is the Mixcast 4 does have nice soft touch buttons all over it where the PodTrack P8 does actually have clicky buttons where you have these on-air buttons here. And it's super annoying because if you listen, you can, you can probably hear that in the mix. Uh, I don't like these clicky buttons for muting because that's something you do often. If someone's going to cough, you can mute them. And with these clicky buttons, it's gonna end up in your recording. On the Mixcast 4, they are soft touch, so you can barely hear when you press them. They do make a little bit of noise, especially if you've got them on a table with two microphones. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just a better design, I think, in terms of the buttons. Everything's soft touch on here, whereas these are all clicky, and I don't get why. Now, because there are more XLR inputs on the PodTrack P8, there's also more headphone outputs. You've got up to six headphones you can plug into the P8. Whereas on the Tascam, you can only plug into four headphones in the back, and you will need a quarter inch to eighth inch uh, adapter if you've got like normal headphones. Um, however, there is an additional headphone jack on the front of the unit for the host of the show. So you can have up to five headphones at a time, which isn't bad. That's a good amount of headphones. Another nice thing about the sound pads on the Mixcast 4 is that you can actually see uh, each jingle, like what is actually loaded on the pad 
on the display, on the nice, big, vibrant display on the unit, you can see here is applause for track one. If I click that, we've got our applause. I can click a drum beat. And it says it right on the screen in plain English. And it even says if you load your own WAV files or whatever on the unit, it'll show that there instead of whatever's preloaded here. Whereas on the PodTrack P8, you have to remember what you've stored on each button. Otherwise, you could click the wrong button and forget your, you know, put a bleep or whatever. Uh, you just have to remember what you've stored there. One thing both of these units do really well is color coding. So you'll notice uh, on the screen on the PodTrack P8, each channel has its own color. So channel one is red, and that aligns with the fader. The fader is also red. The button up on the top here to switch between phantom power is red. And even the headphone jack for that channel is red. So everything is color coordinated. You never get confused if you've got a bunch of people in a podcast, who's who, like if someone needs more volume in their headphones, you know exactly what dial to turn. The Mixcast 4 does a similar thing. I actually kind of like how they do it a little bit better where each uh, channel is color coded and the number below it is actually illuminated, which is really cool. And the headphone uh, knobs up here in the corner are also color coded and those light up as well. So it's a little bit more obvious. However, one thing that's a little bit annoying is that on the Mixcast 4, these aren't it's not like a touch screen. You can't actually click anything here. Uh, it would be cool if I tapped, you know, the, the number one, if the screen would actually bring up that channel settings. Doesn't do that. Um, and on the PodTrack P8, it's a little bit easier to handle in that regard. I actually like the user interface on the PodTrack P8 a little bit more, I think, because from the home screen here, if I want to change something on any microphone, I simply just tap the microphone. I don't know if you can see that on this uh, top-down camera, but all I have to do is tap the microphone icon at the bottom of that channel, and it brings up the settings for that particular channel. So I've got my gain up top, I've got my limiter, my low-cut filter, tone, which is kind of an EQ, and my compressor de at the bottom there. Pretty basic controls, uh, but all I have to do is click that button at the bottom for any channel, and I can do that even on the USB channel. I've got some settings. Uh, it's just really easy. Now, on the Mixcast 4, it's still really easy, but there's an additional step. You have to tap the little hamburger icon in the corner we're all used to. Then you can click on this little icon here. Then you can click one of your channels, so one through Bluetooth. I'll click on channel one, and now I've got my settings for channel one. But if you've noticed uh, on the Zoom, that's one click to get to these settings. On the Mixcast 4, let's count. We've got one, two, three, and now I'm in my settings. So three clicks on the Mixcast 4, one click on the Zoom. Uh, it's just a little bit more intuitive, a little more straightforward, I think. Now, in terms of channel settings, what you can tweak to the sound of your audio, on the Zoom, you've got a mic preamp setting for limiter and low cut. The limiter actually works really good. It just keeps you from clipping. And the low cut just takes out all of that low end rumble. There's no settings for these. They're just kind of an on or off toggle, but they do work well. Now below that, you do have a tone control. And this is kind of a basic EQ that you can toggle between bass and treble. If you go either way, uh, it gets really bassy or really trebly. I leave it right in the middle. And the weird thing is that it does make a difference if it's on or off, even though even though it's right in the middle, it makes it just a little bit more boomy and I like how it sounds. And then below that, you do have um, compressor de -esser. I keep that kind of in the middle here. If you go too far with it, it can get a little bit aggressive. But again, there's no additional settings. It's just min or max. And this does control both compression and de -esser, So you can't really get too deep into the weeds with settings on that. Now on the Mixcast 4, you've got a few more settings so you can toggle between uh, condenser or dynamic mic and that'll turn on or off phantom power uh, below that you've got voice settings so if we dive into that you can see i can change uh, the sound of my voice between deep here's uh, mid and then there's bright and bright's just a little bit too bright for me i leave it on deep because i think that sounds good with my voice but you can actually go in and click manual and then click the little wrench icon here. And now I can actually adjust the frequency of the high and low shelf to really dial in my EQ. And that's kind of cool. There's a little bit more control of the sound on the Mixcast 4. On top of that, you have a dependent compressor here that I've been leaving on soft, but again, you can put it on a manual setting. I don't know what it's doing right now, but here's all the manual settings. It's got all of the you know, professional grade settings you would see like on the Rodecaster Pro. Those are all present here on the Mixcast 4 as well. I'm gonna click that back to soft because I don't know what was going on with that, those manual settings. Now I'm gonna click over here to processing. And here I have a dedicated de that I can tweak by clicking that wrench icon again. 
there's also a noise suppressor that's um, you know bringing down that background noise that isn't present on the Zoom PodTrack P8. So if I stop talking right now, you're probably going to notice that the Tascam Mixcast 4 is a little quieter when I'm not talking, uh, and that's because I've got the noise suppressor turned on. Something to note, the noise suppressor on here is just a basic gate. So you can see here there's a, uh, a noise gate and a low cut filter, and you can tweak these to your desired settings. If you get too aggressive with this, if you really drop that noise gate to attenuate uh, the frequencies when you're not talking, it can sound a little weird, like choppy. I've got mine set to minus 7 dB because that's kind of not noticeable and I like how it sounds. But uh, if you get too carried away with it, it can sound weird. On the PodTrack P8, there's no noise suppression settings, uh, but you can actually do that in post in like Audacity or Audition or whatever pretty easily. So it's not the end of the world, but if you're live streaming, that's where a noise gate can really become handy because you're doing this on the fly and it's not built into the Zoom. Another thing to note uh, between these two units is that the Zoom appears to have more gain per channel. So they're advertised as saying there's up to 70 decibels of gain per channel, which is a ton of gain. And just to demonstrate the extra gain, let's plug in the Shure SM7B to see what this sounds like. Okay, now we've got the Shure SM7B plugged into the Tascam Mixcast 4. And right off the bat, I love this microphone compared to the pod mic. I think this just sounds so much better. But you'll notice that the gain on this um, is a little quieter than what we were getting out of the pod mic. It's because it's a gain-hungry microphone. Um, and now I'm at I'm at 46, so I, I think I'm still okay in terms of gain on the Mixcast 4 with no cloud lifter. And again, I've got the noise suppressor turned on, so the background noise is really tamed. Very quiet. Um, so this is what the Shure SM7B plugged directly in to the Tascam Mixcast 4 sounds like. How does it sound? Now let's plug it into the Zoom PodTrack P8. Unfortunately, I only have one SM7B because they're very expensive, so I can't do side by side. The best I can do is unplug it from here and plug it into the Zoom. So let's try that. Okay, and now we're recording with the Shure SM7B into the PodTrack P8, and this is what it sounds like. Same microphone, same gain, uh, all the settings are the same, all the compression and de-esser and everything are the same. The only difference is that I swapped from the Rode pod mic to the Shure SM7B, and again, we're recording on Zoom PodTrack P8 with the Shure SM7B, and this is what it sounds like. Okay, and now we're back on the road pod mics. I know that Shure just sounded way better, but uh, I've got two of these, so we're gonna continue on with these. Let's talk about a couple of other differences between these two machines. Uh, first of all, the Mixcast 4 has this really cool voice changer, and uh, it's a lot of fun. You can tweak this to sound like this, or like a chipmunk. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. And I, I really like that. I can't think of a practical use for the voice changer. But it is a lot of fun. Now, the weird thing about the the uh, voice changer is that you can only apply it to one channel at a time, and you can't apply it to the uh, USB or phone channel. Just kind of a bummer. I kind of thought a use case for this could be to have like an anonymous caller call in. And you'd be able to disguise their voice. But you can't do that with this. It only works on the microphone channels and you can only do it on one channel at a time. On top of that voice changer effect, there is additional effects like reverb, which is kind of cool. I haven't played around with it too much because honestly, it's not something I'll use all the time, but it is there. Another feature that these two units have in common is a form of talkback. So that means you can talk to people that are in the room with a microphone in front of them and they can hear you, but that speech won't be recorded to the actual sound file. Now, both machines do have this nice big display and they're both pretty similar on what they show you, like how much time you have remaining, how long your podcast has been recording for, etc. Uh, the Zoom PodTrack P8 actually has a few other features though. You can actually edit your podcast directly on the machine. So you can go in and kind of click on your wave file, delete sections, add background music, normalize your audio, all of that right on the unit without actually putting your files onto the computer. That's actually really cool. But it's not something I found myself using all the time because it's just easier to do it on the computer. So I just export my files anyway. But it is kind of a cool feature of the P8 if you're somebody who travels a lot. Another feature that makes the Zoom PodTrack P8 a little easier to travel with, despite being smaller and lighter, that's a perk obviously, is how you can power the P8. So you can actually power the PodTrack P8 three different ways. 
You can use the included AC adapter plugged into a wall. You can use AA batteries, which is really interesting. You put four of them in the bottom compartment of the unit, and that'll power it for a couple of hours. Or you can use a USB power bank, which is probably the most convenient way, and that works over USB Type-C in the back here, and that's actually how I'm powering this right now. This is actually really cool because if you've just got your laptop and the PodTrack P8, you can actually power the P8 right off your laptop battery, and I've done this with my MacBook Pro. It's really easy to do. Now on the Tascam MixCast 4, this only ships with an AC adapter, and it cannot be powered over USB, so you gotta have a wall outlet near you or like a you know, battery bank with a uh, 110 outlet on it, something like that in order to use this where the portability of the PH is just a little bit better in that regard. Okay, now let's talk about using these units as a audio interface. The Zoom PodTrack P8 is only a stereo in and out. So that means everything plugged into the unit will go through one channel, you know, left and right into your computer and you can only record a stereo mix. And that's where the Tascam has a big advantage because this is a true multi-channel interface. So all of the channels are ind independent on your computer. And if you use something like Adobe Audition, uh, you can record them independently. Not only that, but the Tascam MixCast 4 actually ships with its own included software to record podcasts. And it's actually a really full featured software. It allows you to do multi-channel recording, add and cut up effects and do all kinds of different stuff in the software, which is really powerful. And it comes entirely for free with the purchase of your Mixcast 4, which is pretty awesome. Now let's talk about the file types on these two machines. So both machines record to SD cards in the back of the units. Um, the Mixcast 4 uses something called a PolyWave file. This is one file that collects all of the WAV files from all of the different channels and turns it into one file. Now, in order to actually use this, you have to bring it into that Tascam software and then save it out as individual files. If you want just one channel or if you wanna you know, see all of your channels separately, you have to bring it into that Tascam software first because it's a PolyWAV file and then export it from there. Now, the Zoom's a little bit simpler it actually just spits out independent files. So there's a file for every channel and it's dumped into a folder. And if you just want, you know, mic one WAV file, you can grab it right from the folder and bring it into Adobe Premiere if you're doing some something with video or something like that. It's just a little bit easier to do. Okay, now let's talk about audio quality. Uh, between these two, the Zoom PodTrack P8 is limited to a 16-bit file, and it only records at 44.1 kilohertz, where the MixCast 4 records at 24-bit, 48 thousand kilohertz. But if you're somebody who's not like a total audio nerd and you're, you're just buying these to make a podcast or live stream with, both of them sound good and you're probably not gonna notice a difference. But I think in the side-by-side -side comparison, you can hear a little bit of advantage towards the MixCast 4 in terms of audio quality. Okay, you've been listening to this whole video with the processing turned on on both of these units, so it's been coloring my voice a little bit. Now I've actually turned off all of the processing on both the P8 and the MixCast 4 to get an idea of what the actual preamps sound like side by side. So the gain is set similarly between these two, but I've turned off all of the additional compression and limiting and all that stuff. So this is just the raw sound quality from the preamps. I'm curious to see which one sounds better because I think you get more raw gain from the P8, but on the MixCast 4, it's got really nice preamps as well because that's what I'm listening to in my ears right now. And both sound pretty good. So you let me know which one sounds better down below. With all the settings turned off, which is the better buy? Okay, and now I've turned all the settings back on so you can hear what I sound like. Sounds a little bit better in my ears with all the settings turned back on, particularly on the MixCast 4. I can't actually hear what the P8 sounds like because I'm plugged into the MixCast 4, uh, but you let me know down below. Does the processing sound better on the MixCast 4 or the P8? Let me know what your ears say. Make sure you're wearing headphones for this. I probably should have said that at the beginning of this video. Oh well. Oh yeah, I want to mention one more thing about the MixCast 4 that I really like, and it's that in the settings, there's actually a built-in USB delay, which is super handy because as somebody who does a lot of live streaming on my main channel, um, the USB delay is very important. And this is something I would typically have to do in software in like OBS Studio or Ecamm Live. I can add a mic delay there, but having it right on the mixer means that I can use this in like Zoom or like uh, Google Google Hangouts or any of those other platforms without having to worry about my lip sync being in sync with my camera angle, uh, because that's a big problem typically when you're using an audio interface with a camera going through a capture card, the audio a, a lot of times won't line up. In either case, this is just my high level comparison between these two mixers. I hope you found it helpful. 
I personally am leaning towards the Mixcast 4 as keeping around because it, as somebody who doesn't really move my mixer around, I don't need the portability of the P8. And I think I like how the Mixcast 4 sounds a little bit better. I also like that it's a true multi-channel interface, has 24-bit, has that USB mic delay, a lot of nice features there. The only thing I wish it had is the ability to be uh, powered over USB, which is kind of a bummer. I wish... I wish that was included on the Mixcast 4. In either case, that's all I've got for this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe because I'm trying to grow this channel into something. And uh, let me know what other things you want to see compared, uh, what other content creation kind of comparisons or tutorials or anything that I can show off on this channel. Let me know in the comments down below what else I can do on this channel. Okay, that's all I've got. Bye.